Hello, everybody. It is 7.30 CST PM on the 10th of April. Ginny, hello. Hey, Playful. Good evening to you as well. And it's 2021. Today is a special episode of Cast Talks because it's the 25th episode. 25 episodes, 25 weeks, almost half a year of doing this. It certainly is crazy that we've come all this way. You have to forgive me for any sentimentalities that I hold. This is a, more than just a hobby to me. This is a very powerful thing in my life and I guess it's uh, it's grown on me so much. It almost brings a tear to my eye to see how much it's evolved and how much it's changed. But enough of that for now. Today we are talking about some good news, as always, and a couple of cat videos as well. I'm so sorry about your foot, Jenny. Make sure you take care of that first, okay? I'm glad to have you, even if it's only for a few minutes. This is the show, Cast Talks, where you can leave us on in the background, you can put us, put us on before you go to sleep, or you can just have something to drink, relax, do something that would make you soothed and calm. And if you'd really like to, go ahead and follow and say something in the chat. I'd be glad to hear from you, whoever's listening. But for the most part, it's all about just taking it easy. There's many things that I've always questioned about the longevity of, and I have questioned my own ability to maintain much of anything for a long period of time. You know, I've questioned if I was capable of working or going into a medical assistance or asking for help of any kind that I could fulfill or actually stay on track with. I thought the same thing about streaming regularly. I thought, if there's anything I can do, if it was just one thing a week that I would do, I'd try something on Saturdays, my favorite day of the week. 
Saturdays at, you know, who would guess what time? 7, 8, 7.30. And, you know, I just decided to give it a try. And here we are 25 weeks later. It makes me happy, really, knowing that we've come this far together. But yeah, I do hope it feels better for you soon, Jenny. It's always good to be here, back and at it. And for today, we're mostly going to be talking about news revolving around recycling plastic. It's a fairly interesting topic for me. Yeah, get that foot elevated. If you don't mind me asking, how did you hurt it? Were you doing something, you know, strenuous or was it just a bump that you got? And this week's tea is, as usual, vanilla honey chamomile. I hope all of you there listening at home have something equally tasty to drink beside you. So, we'll start on our first good news for the day. You don't know you stepped on it wrong, you think. This is the third day. It was feeling better, but you just stepped wrong again. Well, I'm sorry about that. Make sure that you get plenty of rest. Sometimes you just injure yourself without even meaning to. You know, you just step on your foot wrong and You've hurt yourself, and I always feel a little silly. In fact, I scratched my thumb just today uh, trying to get something out of my pants that was stuck like a piece of twig or something that was in my pants leg, and I, I scratched my thumb pretty badly. I, I got like a layer of skin got peeled, and I was surprised at how sharp my fingernails are. <laughs> but, you know, it is fairly sharp, isn't it? No pain, though, luckily. Thank you, Jenny. But uh, there's no pain there. It just, you know, it was a very precise and quick motion. So it, it basically... <laughs> Thank you, but like I said, it doesn't hurt. It was so quick that it, I, don't, I didn't even feel anything. And it's basically already healed. You just got to give it some time for the skin to come back together. But enough about injury for today. I do hope you start to feel better soon though, Ginny. I'm thinking of you. Our first story comes from Andy Courtley from yesterday. Branson Banked Company captures megatons of carbon injected into concrete, and Amazon is building their HQ with it. <laughs> hey, oh, mayo to you, Ella, and welcome. Welcome to the stream. I'm glad to see you. I was wondering if you'd be here later or earlier or 
what would be your appearance today, but I'm glad to see you that you've made it. We're just starting a good news story, so you haven't really missed anything. Though, we were talking about a little bit of ouchies that we sustained throughout the week. But we're all going to be more careful and sustain less of them in the future, I think. Which sounds like a good deal to me. <laughs> yeah, some ouchies. Ginny had ouchies and I had ouchies. Though hers seems to ouch more than mine. The second most abundant man-made material in the world. <laughs> it's true, we, we got into some trouble, but uh, like I said, Ginny seems to need more good vibes than me. Boo-boos, yeah, boo-boos. Well, I hope that you're doing well, Jenny, besides that. The second most abundant man-made material in the world, I'm glad you're doing okay, is being employed by a startup to jail carbon dioxide produced by factories before it's sent into the atmosphere. The material, concrete. The startup, carbon cure. And as well as sequestering carbon and reducing emissions, it solves a major longevity issue with concrete, strengthening the material and reducing the production costs. With so many merits, it's as unsurprising as it is exciting to see that private sector giants like Amazon, Alibaba Group, and Mitsubishi are all pouring money into the small, understated Halifax firm, which launched over a dozen years ago. Carbon Cure is on its way to achieving 500 megatons of CO2 reductions annually, helping to decarbonize the built environment while positioning the concrete industry to lead the transition to the new low-carbon economy. Carbon Cure CEO and founder Robert Niven said in a statement, How much in is 500 megatons? Let's talk about equivalents. One megaton in the metric system represents one million metric tons. Carbon Cure on, are on track to remove 500 million metric tons of carbon annually. According to the EPA, 500 million metric tons is equivalent to 126 coal plants firing non-stop for a year, or 91 million homes electricity consumption over a year. In small figures, it's what 109 million passenger vehicles create per year from driving, or the total emissions from vaporizing 56 billion gallons of gasoline. It's unsurprising, then, that with this incredible potential, Carbon Cure won the 2020 American Clean Tech Company of the Year by San Francisco's Clean Tech Group. Clean Tech has already captured 118 million tons of carbon so far, which was mostly bought from chemical engineering plants that make things like ammonia or ethanol. A small and easy retrofitted device, colloquially known as the box, links a CO2 tank with a concrete mixture. Inside is the company's secret tank, which injects CO2 in such a way as, it, as to turn it from a gas back to a solid. A water-based solution triggers the CO2 to create carbonate ions early in the mixing process. The cement within the concrete, the key ingredient responsible for its thousands of years of use, but also its heavy emissions profile, 
contains calcium ions, which the carbonate binds to, creating calcium carbonate. These little bits of limestone help strengthen the concrete, but also solve a major longevity issue. Over time, concrete can absorb CO2 from the air, causing it to shrink and corrode. The steel embedded within, such as rebar, causing a major headache, particularly in the upkeep of bridges and overpasses. The calcium carbonate helps the concrete resist this shrinking, giving producers or builders even more reason to employ carbon cures tech. Amazon, for instance, is constructing a Goliath new headquarters in Virginia and utilizing carbon cure for all the concrete in the building, while Bill Gates' brainchild Breakthrough Energy Ventures and Mitsubishi Corp. have both injected serious capital in order to help the company reach that massive 500 megaton target. Right now, carbon sequestering is limited mostly to natural sources, like trees, which don't have as much economic value as electricity, steel, or concrete. But if humanity can add its most potent and prolific building materials into the family of CO2 sequesters, then the climate crisis is all but solved. What a lovely story. <laughs> These stories always make me feel more hopeful when I read them. And now we're on to one of my favorite segments. The cat videos. <laughs> Our first one is I bought Super Mario Cat for my cats, cart for my cats, and they went wild. By Claire the Love Cat. <laughs> this uh, idea of having a virtual reality car and actually piloting it into your cats is something I could definitely see being fun. You couldn't play a whole game of trying to get around your cats without them sl slapping or smacking the car. I was talking to a friend of mine named Why Not, and she was telling me about some of the animals that she's had over the years. And she was showing me videos of snakes that she had run into. Snakes are very curious things. I've always found them to be a little scary, but I think it's natural to have a fear of serpents. But you know, one of these days I'll find a nice little snake somewhere and give them a pet. They're not so dangerous, those noodles, if you know which ones to hold on to. Be careful of your language, playful, but I understand definitely. They are definitely not sure what to do. <laughs> they look so unamused. I'm thinking like, if ever I get the ability to have a, a bunch of animals like, no, it's okay, Spiteful, it's really okay. Don't even fret about it. I think that there's a, a passion that I have for uh, having fun with animals and uh, taking time off to look at that, isn't that so cool? Wow, the future, <laughs> the future. You have the actual cats to look out for, though. My gosh. This is a scary stage with these cats roaming around. <laughs> A 
<laughs> dangerous. Uh, they could just come at it out of anywhere and hit you. Oh. They're thinking about it, you can tell. But yeah, I... <laughs> I oh my gosh. I am forever amused by seeing animals interact with technology. Oh my gosh. I... Oh. He's coming for you. <laughs> my gosh. It's a, it's a fantastic time, really. Oh, that's so precious. I, I am very fascinated with uh, like automatic, look at the one on the left. So very curious. I am fascinated with automatic uh, litter boxes and stuff like that. No, I wouldn't mind cleaning a litter box but I do think about how crazy that must be for a cat. Oh, it's ruining the stage right there. Trying to clean a litter box uh, or taking its litter out and then it gets cleaned up automatically. Ooh, it's a close up cat. I'm sure they oh, scared a little too. Yeah, I see what you mean. Scared a little too. Oh, you can't get past that cat. They gotta wait for them to move. Someday in the future, cats will play video games with each other. I'm seeing it now. <laughs> cat gamers. Won't that be crazy? I think though that's something that everybody thinks about and worries about is being a good poor cats don't new don't know what's going on mostly. Yeah, this is a little bit out of their wheelhouse. It's kind of hard to tell. I uh, if they even have an understanding of like what a track is or what's going on. You know, they're probably just lazing about and oh. Something I, I think about though is being a good pet father, pet person. You know, pet owner, pet companion. I definitely have the instincts of... <laughs> keeps getting in the way of being a... a I, I'm definitely patient enough, right? But I've always wondered if I have the... <laughs> if I have the willpower to have zero idea it's fake yet. <laughs> One of those. I wonder if I have the willpower to, I guess, not be assertive, but to actually be a good force in their life. Because I can be a bit timid sometimes. Though I, I do my best. I do. I think something else that concerns me is I, being able to actually give them attention and to not be neglectful. I have a history of both being neglect and neglecting myself. So I would want to make sure I know as much as I can and have plenty of time to give them and plenty of love and affection that I can give them as well. I have always heard though, if you're going to get a cat, you should get two at a time. But I prefer a cat and a dog if I could. Find some cats and dogs that get along with each other. <laughs> Sniffing butts. You know the cats do that. They sniff butts. If I was a cat, I would sniff butts too. But that's because I'd be a cat. Uh, but how was your week, Playful? Have you had a nice week? You too, Jenny and, and Ella. I hope you've all had nice weeks. 
besides whatever ouchies and boo-boos he may have accrued. It was okay. <laughs> That's fair enough. And here's our next one. What'll happen when I make my lazy cats run, uh, run a race? Uh, all five of the cats getting ready to race. It's been crummy, but it's fine. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. Just a lot happening with other stuff. I, I know how that can be sometimes. But it will get better if you just keep putting out positive energy and keep keep on keeping on, then you'll, you'll get someplace good. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I certainly like the idea of going on cat adventures with my cat friends. Be a cat father, crazy cat, per crazy cat dad, crazy cat guy, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that playful. I do my very best to provide an atmosphere that can help people. But you know, I've always felt like when I was younger, especially, I never had the environment that I was looking for to get into this kind of mood, into this mindset. And I think if I can replicate what I've been looking for, if I can, oh my gosh, cats in cardboard boxes. <laughs> if I could ever replicate what I've been looking for, I always felt like it'd be a good change in the world. And I do feel like I, I make a small amount of change which I'm happy with, even a small amount. The small amount I can do. Ah, some of these cats have huge eyes. I love that. Big old cat eyes. I've always thought that cats have a real keenness for getting into trouble, though I am okay with a... <laughs> I love seeing that one look around. I'm okay with trouble some cats and mischievous cats, but I also like calm and uh, good boy and good girl cats as well. I don't know how this is going to work, <laughs> racing all these cats at once. So many of them. <laughs> I want to have a cat rubbing its face on my face someday soon, though. That's something I look forward to. Trying to ice your foot and be here too, but it's not working. You need to run. Oh, it's all right, Ginny. Thank you for coming. I'm always glad that you can make it, even if it's only a little bit. Hope you all have a good night. I hope you have a good night too. Thank you for coming. Glad you can make it. Take care, and you take care too. I do have a tendency to make myself feel a bit sleepy as well though. Thank you. 
These cats are going out of here, aren't they? Yeah, I I do have an affinity for taking care of animals. I, even though I worry about not being able to, I seem to really get along with ones that give me a chance. Uh, cats usually seem to get along well with me, and some dogs love me too, following me around and trying to jump up on me. Maybe it's uh, good boys and good girls that are attracted to me. I hope that's the case, because I do love them as well. Sniped out the food. Yeah, I have a... A definite interest in... Being an animal owner at some point in my life. I do wonder when that will happen. It'll probably be when I end up having my own uh, place to live or... If I share a place to live with people that are trustworthy and good around animals. But I don't know when that might be. I hope it's soon though so I can have a guest appearance from a cat or a dog. Guest appearance from a, a cat on cast talks. if you don't mind saying. <laughs> that cat peering from behind box number one. sure if I would take a cat out for a walk though. I'd have to see what kind of neighborhood I end up living in. Dog was Penny. Penny is a very pretty name. Let's see, there has been a few cats and dogs in my life. Uh, and let's see, there was Layla, a white and black cat. There was uh, Slippers, my black, every black great Russian that I used to uh, have as my great friend back when I was in, living in California still. And let's see, I can't, I can scarcely remember other animals to be honest with you. But I try my best to uh, keep my memories alive of the ones that left an impact on me. I wonder if Ella's busy. Well, 
we'll start on the next good news story though so i have two stories i'm going to suggest so i want you to tell me which one you like best playful do you like this cancer surviving girl scout or in 24 years california has cut toxic air pollution which one do you like best Personally, I'm fairly fond of the California has cut uh, total pollution stuff, but I'm okay reading about Girl Scouts too. I've always been a bit envious of the Girl Scouts. I was never in any scout associations, but I'd like to be, I don't know, the second one sounds better. It does sound a little better, I agree. I think I would have been a good Girl Scout though, though I was very... I'm focused in an early range. It was very uh, wild. This is in 24 years. California has cut toxic air pollution by 78%, resulting in 82% fewer attributable deaths. California's air pollution control standards have drastically dropped the amount of diesel particulate matter in the air. Cardiopulmonary deaths attributable to air quality. Scientists at UC Berkeley are hailing the state's diesel engine standards and other measures imposed over a number of years, even in the face of loosened environmental regulations in recent years. If one has never seen the pictures of the city of Los Angeles before the Clean Air Act, they look like something out of the movie Escape from Los Angeles, but encouraging shifts away from high sulfur fuels and replacements of diesel shifts with electric ones has gradually scaled the horror show back despite the efforts and despite the fact that still today there are more cars registered in the state of California than any other state. Our analysis of mobile source DPM, diesel particulate matter emissions, suggests that many California-based sectors policies have been highly effective relative to the rest of the US, write the authors of the paper published in Science. They found that from the period between 1990 and 2014, the amount of DPM in the California skies fell by 78%, while cardiopulmonary and cancer deaths linked to diesel pollution dropped by 82%. The largest fall came from tractor trailers, which is unsurprising given the fact they often run on diesel and cover many miles. Reductions were also observed in passenger and construction vehicles, as well as from the marine sector. California's overall consumption of diesel actually increased over this period, which suggests that mandates to move to more refined fuels and retrofitting existing vehicles with pollution filters are highly effective strategies, both for recommended and for implementation in other states by the Berkeley scientists. Moves towards electric public and private transportation, such as Governor Newsom's executive order to ban the sale of fossil fuel vehicles beyond 2035, should clear California's skies substantially more and will be a momentous accomplishment from one of the country's largest economies. That was a good one. I'm gonna do one more though. We're going into our second quarter actually. Today's episode is the quarter point to us reaching 100, 100 episodes. I don't even know what this show would look like anymore at episode 100, but I hope it retains a lot of its eccentricities and nuances sort of like these. 
I wonder what it will be like though. I don't know yet, but I'm hopeful, honestly. I look forward to seeing what could happen next. So here's our next one. Sir David Edinburgh, you hopes go too will thank you playful. Vax this new tech that can recycle all plastics by Andy Corbley, April 5th of this month, this year. A new recycling plant under construction in England features technologies that can break down any kind of plastic polymer into its constituent elements for recycling. According to Forbes, wildlife filmmaker Sir David Attenborough appeared in a video alongside other naturalists and the owners of the new plant that used superheated steam to obliterate the chemical bonds holding the monomers together. Owned by Mura Technology, the process is known as Hydro PRS, and it's particularly special due to its ability to break down plastics normally destined for landfills or incineration. It can even remove biological material like food scraps clinging to the plastics, an aspect that can sometimes prevent plastics from being recycled, instead being used to power the boilers fueling the recycling. What's left are oils and chemicals ready to be resold to manufacturers to make into new products. What's so tragic about plastic pollution is that it is so totally unnecessary, and Burroughs says in the video released by UK recycling firm Mura Technology, the plastic in our oceans should never have found its way there in the first place. Plastic pollution is a huge problem, and there are tons of smart technologies, many of them emerging for recycling and biodegrading plastic. Further still, plastic is being pulled out of rivers and the ocean with ever more intelligent designs and committed organizations. Yet the problem is set to get worse for the oceans as more of the developing world enters the consumption, heavy prosperity and security of modern life. Mura says, the materials produced during the recycling process can be used again and again without ever becoming chemically unstable and so it's not surprising, then, that the British government is backing the project to the hilt as the plant in Teesside, England, ramps up to 1 million tons of plastic recycling annually. The government is committed to both clamping down on the unacceptable plastic waste that harms our environment and ensuring more materials can be reused instead of being thrown away said Rebecca Powell, the UK Undersecretary of State for the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. By investigating in investing in these truly groundbreaking technologies, we will help drive these efforts even further and I look forward to seeing them develop and deliver real results. Lovely. Time for some more animal videos, if you ask me. Well, what was something good that happened in your week, Playful? Tell me something good that happened in your week. I'll tell you something good that happened in my week. I got to speak to a new person, and I got to speak to Y and Pearly and Hunter as well. I got to meet Anna. Nothing, it's just been another week. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. 
you could always say that you're having a good time now and then that could be a good time in your week and the start of a lovely next week perhaps I hope that's something for you Oh, I was able to get my first shot of two this week. It's true. You could always just, you know, hang out here and enjoy yourself and count that as a highlight every week. I'd be fine with that. In fact, I'd be more than fine if you decided that Cast Talks was the highlight every week. It'd make my... It'd make my... Well, the cat's like, what's it one in the world? Yeah. <laughs> It would make me happy if this was your best part of the week. Really, it would. I do think that I have thought about being a animal groomer at like a PetSmart or being a cashier at a PetSmart or being a like a <laughs> you know case <laughs> well have you ever have you ever groomed an animal before with a brush like this because it's <laughs> I figured you meant Cass but I didn't want to assume anything oh but yeah this week, I got my first shot of two. And I'm getting my next shot in uh, on the 28th of this month. After that, I'll be able to rejoin the workforce for the most part. And I'm looking forward to working in my town and around a place that I can hopefully walk to would be great. Uh, but, you know, I would accept having to be driven by my family as well. You stop to get your first. Well, it is. Uh, it made my arm very sore for a little while, very tender. And I'm not quite looking forward to number two because I've heard the effects are worse for number two. But But I do think I'll be grateful when it gets to uh, mid-May and I'm able to go out there and have a job again, which would be nice. I worked at a pizza place before, uh, before the world events changed so much, though I wasn't in there right up until it. I was only there for a little while, but it definitely didn't help with my skincare routine, I'll say that much. I can't even eat cheese anymore at this point, so, you know, I can't eat the cheese there. They don't, <laughs> you're, you're just glad you're not getting the one shot. Which one is that? Oh, cats. Cats eating, eating some tuna. No, it's all right. I, I'm all right with it. I, uh, I just need to find some, some vegetarian, vegan options, and I know I'll be just fine. But I can't eat pizza anymore, at least not normal pizza, which, you know, it's okay, I'm, I'm over pizza. It's ravioli that really stinks, because I, li I really like ravioli. I'm a big ravioli boy.
Oh, the AstraZeneca. I don't actually know which one I got. I, I, I didn't think to ask, but I, I was just so nervous being with all those people. Oh, there was a very nice uh, older lady there, though, that was talking with me about my apprehensions. And, uh, you know... It made me really happy. I was at a, a lovely little college uh, outside of town, and I, I felt much better being able to actually talk to somebody and to uh, have some people to communicate with. Well, uh, playful, I don't know if that's completely something that I can spe uh, speculate on, but I certainly hope that doesn't happen to anyone who, who takes it. I'll say that much. Certainly not something I would want for anyone to go through. This person is very good at cleaning cats. They know how to distract them and how to keep them occupied so that they just uh, stay still. <laughs> That's something I'd like to learn is how to keep the cats sitting still while you clean them. They're so thin when you clean them up. All for... <laughs> it looks like they've escaped. Swaddling cats, that'd be nice too. I guess I just, I, I just really enjoy a very kind and sweet animals, and I, I do hope I get to have one in my life someday soon, as I've said. <laughs> Runaway kitty, yeah. The cats are out of there. They are out of there. started a new treatment as well though for my epicondylitis on both arms it is a elbow strap and some uh, cold ice packs on the arms I wear the elbow strap almost constantly and I ice my arms three times a day for 20 minutes each and I hope that helps a lot I hope that's able to do a little bit of good for me It does seem to help a little bit so far, but it's a little too early to tell yet. And welcome back, Eli. I got that advice from Hannah Mixup, which I, I was talking to her just yesterday night. Uh, and talking to her yesterday night on Second Life, and uh, she was she was very lovely. I, I feel very grateful that I got her advice and her wisdom. But what about you, Eli? How has your week been? Tell us about your week, if you don't mind. You need to go lay down for a little. You had me playing in the background. Oh, well, that's perfect. That's exactly what it's meant for. How about help? It was very good. And I do think it has already started to help slightly. But 
I'm probably going to take a bath after my stream, so that might help too. Your week was okay. You accidentally got into the habit of sleeping at 1, but hopefully this weekend you can fall asleep earlier. Yeah, I feel like it's really easy to fall into that habit if you're not careful. Yeah, I know, I know, whoops. It can happen if you're not careful. You can really start day. <laughs> yeah, you can start day drift into like reverse insomnia where you actually can't fall asleep or not where you fall asleep too late or you fall asleep too early in some cases but i you know it does happen where i think it's a more compliant video right there yeah it is i'm not really fitting for this though you can fall into bad habits that way but Something that I find really helps is if you I, find a time when you start to feel sleepy during the day. Like for me, it's like 9 o'clock is when I start to feel sleepy, which is perfect for this. Here, we'll finish that thought after our five minute break because we're at the halfway point. Halfway through our episode of episode 25. What I recommend you do now is you go find something to stretch your legs and, and do for about five minutes. If you're falling asleep and you want to keep coming to that, you want to keep showing up, stand up and stretch out your legs, get something to drink, go to the bathroom, and generally get yourself taken care of so you can come on back in five minutes and join us again. That's what I'm going to do. So I'll be back in a minute.
All right, we're back. Back to the adorable scratchings of the of the cats. It's a good place to be. I would like to be adored by cats someday. Adored. The adoration of the animals. That's something I want. Adoration in general is something I strive for. But I hope you all had a lovely little prank, whatever you were doing. Thank you very much, Playful. Welcome back to you too. some cute ones. Oh, it's okay. There's more cute ones coming up. <laughs> but, you know, I always try to create an environment, an atmosphere of welcome back, welcome back. Thank you, Ella. Welcome back to you, too. I try to... You never moved anyway. Well, you know, who knows what happens when... <laughs> oh. I, I, I never know what to expect. I always just say welcome back anyway. You know, I always feel good welcoming people back. But, you know, I'm always trying to create good vibes. Uh, create a good atmosphere. It's really important to me to make people comfortable and it is sometimes a difficulty that I face making people comfortable even at my own expense but I can be very timid sometimes it's hard for me to crack the whip it's very difficult for me to do that I think because I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable or cause any commotions or raucousness But I like to think that I'm not so timid that I can't defend myself verbally or otherwise. Though, I do find that difficult because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I think there's a, a beast that lives within everybody and it's capable of doing that kind of harm. It's just whether or not you wish to indulge or you have to indulge in that behavior is a major difference. I hope I never have to. I hope that none of you have to as well. And I hope that these cats continue to have plenty of treats and plenty of hugs and even some kisses. You know, I've always thought that for those, plants are like actual food for them. Yeah, I think so. I think those are, I, I don't remember what the name of the plant is, but uh, there's plants that, that cats like. They're mostly carnivores, but they do, they do eat some plants. It's probably just like a treat plant though. Safer than real ones. So I think that they just, that this is just a plant that cats like. <laughs> eh, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's some plants that eh, carnivores like, like dogs like some plants too, but mostly they, they eat meat and like fish. Cats love fish. I, I, I have had a lot of fish eating myself in the past uh, year, but I have actually quite quit after I changing my views a little bit on, on fish in general, but still being okay with eating them now and then. <laughs> 
tuna. I can't stand tuna either, to be honest with you. They love it though, you're right. They love it, I just think it's gross. <laughs> I, I, I've always thought that. My parents and my brother and sister sometimes would make a tuna salad and I was like, oh gosh, this is horrible. I can't stand the stuff. No, I think it's, I think it's abysmal. Used to like it, but lately it's just unbearable, especially the smell. When they're making tuna salad in the house, I'm just like, I can't be around it. <laughs> it just smells like the, the most fishy and the most unpleasing scent to me. And I don't know why I feel that way about tuna salad, but I just, I just, you'd have to really find me in a, a bad state to want to eat tuna salad. The smell turns you off. <laughs> I know what you mean. At least I think I do. But it turns me off too. I feel negative when I'm around it. celery it's actually the worst <laughs> it makes you angry <laughs> well uh, I don't like celery and I don't like tuna so essentially a tuna salad is like a nightmare for me it's like if you can imagine the two worst things in the world it's like mixing both of them you like celery well I'm glad somebody likes celery around here like angry insect to your stomach. Oh, just by the smell. The smell alone is pretty. It's pretty bad. It's a rotten affair for me. Uh, the two most abysmal foods I could think of: celery and tuna. Certainly, an awful time would await me if I ate those things. But. Luckily, none of us have to eat that now. You like mayo? I don't think mayo is that great, but um, I, I would, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't seem to like anything. I swear I do like a few things. I do. <laughs> I swear, I, I, I think mayo isn't my favorite, really, but maybe spicy mayo would be okay. Uh, not in spoonfuls, but if it's on a sandwich or some spicy mayo, uh, <laughs> I haven't had spicy mayo before. I don't think I like chipotle mayo is so yum. Yeah, I imagine. I don't like dipping my fries in anything these days, but I used to dip them in ketchup. Very stereotypical, very basic man that I was. I would be like, oh, ketchup and fries, you know? Mm. La -di da ring-a-ding and I did uh, very much enjoy it for the time but now it's got too much sugar you used to dip your fries in ranch Ugh. gosh that's abysmal <laughs> it's horrible and people that, did, that dip their pizzas in ranch and stuff like that I'm just like no no you can't do it it won't work I, I'll, I'll refuse to eat it it's too much Used to dip your chips in ranch too. You're you're going down some roads I can't follow, Ella. I can't follow there. I'm sorry. That's a that's a path I can't take. <laughs> I can't I can't go down that path. I'm glad it's only used to though, not currently. You're heading to the ranch. That's where you're going. The Hidden Valley. You gotta, you gotta milk the ranch trees to get the ranch fruit, the ranch fields. Pluck the ranch jars off of the, off of the 
stalks of ranch corn, whatever it grows on. You just pluck the jar right off the stalk. The ranch corn. You know what I mean. Ranch, ranch, ranch. Let's get into our next good news story, though. Enough talk about disgusting food uh, mixes and matches. At least for now. India fishermen divert their catch of ocean plastic. Stretch in the ranch. It's <laughs> pretty good. Of ocean plastic so it can be used to rebuild roads by Andy Corbley on April the 5th of 2021. That's just a few days ago. In the state of Kerala, known as the Jewel of South India, fishermen are taking it upon themselves to keep it that way and secure their livelihoods against plastic pollution. Their workers' association is encouraging fishermen to save all the plastic waste fished up by their nets in order to support a 2017 government clean seas initiative that's turning plastic into roads. A silver, a sliver of coastal land on the southwest tip of India, Kerala, has a thriving fishing community. According to a report from Hindu, the Hindu, the fishing industry directly employs 55,000 people working on three and a half thousand boats and almost a million indirectly while generating 1.5 billion rupees or 14 million in revenue. As plastic content has gradually increased in the fishing waters, the local government took notice passing a clean seas law known as the Suchitwa Sagaram, which instructed the harbor authority to distribute nylon bags to fishing boats with the request that they save every scrap of plastic that gets caught in their nets. Once ashore, the plastic, often far too mangled or contaminated for available recycling methods, is shredded into a kind of confetti and mixed with asphalt to make roads. The arithmetic is positive as it requires the plastic equivalent of a million shipping, shopping bags per kilometer of road, while replacing one ton of emissions, heavy asphalt, and reducing road costs by about 9%. The plastic in the roads appears to also give road resistance to immense heat of the midday Indian sun. An April update on the Kerala fisherman's work from the Guardian details how the project has so far amassed 176,000 pounds of plastic. That's 80,000 kilograms for all of you who uh, don't use the imperial system. Of which more than half has gone towards creating 84 miles and that's 135 kilometers of road. Previously, we didn't care much about the plastic we collected in our nets. Peter Mathias, president of the Al Kerala Fishing Boat Operators Association, told The Guardian, but not anymore. We're now protecting the ocean to save our livelihoods. Had we continued to be reckless, there wouldn't be any more fish for us to catch. The project, which also gives employment to those sorting the trash to sell to rebuilt road building companies, is growing in scale up and down the 375 miles of coastline with dive fishermen reportedly going to government buildings to see if they can get involved too. Local sources also explain that attitudes are changing in the state towards plastic pollution. And there's now a sense of pride in these efforts such that locals are trying to keep littering tourists in line and fishermen put stickers on their boats displaying their participation. Let's get one more. Let's get one more of these stories. This one's a little older. This is actually from a year ago. Madman digs canal for decades to bring water to dry Indian village, enduring jeers that turn to jeers. Visionaries often accused. Visionaries are often accused of being a little mad, even by their wives. 
Such was the case of Longi, a resident of India's drought-blighted Gaia district in the eastern state of Bihar. Longi Buya had become increasingly distraught as more and more farmers, including four of his own sons, left Kolithwa for greener pastures. Taking a leaf from Don Quixote, Buyan was determined not only to dream an impossible dream, but to make that dream come true by single-handedly bringing water to this village in hopes of transforming the barren land into arable acreage. Inspired by the earlier exploits of mountain men, Dashrath Mach, who, with just a hammer and chisel, spent 22 years carving a road through the mountains near the village Gilar from 1960 to 1982. Bois set out to dig an irrigation canal by hand to the closest water source in the Bagetha Hills. I had heard about him and I thought if he can do it, why can't I? Bouya told Al Jazeera. They all thought I was mad. He decided to dig a canal from a natural water source in Bagetha Sawasi forest to the village. Village leader Vishnaput Bokta told the Tribune of India. The villagers took their cattle generous, generally to that source for watering, which also provided sustenance to the animals living in the forest area. Longi knew that the water source was enough to irrigate the agricultural land for the villagers. However, it was a great challenge to, to bring water into the village. Despite the teasing from his family and fellow villagers, the now 70-year-old Buya toiled every day to make the four-foot-wide by three-foot-deep canal a reality. It took him nearly 30 years to accomplish his goal, but now everyone is benefiting from the fruits of his decades-long labor. Buya, whose reputation as a neighborhood eccentric has since been transformed into local hero, was recently awarded for his efforts with a brand new Mahindra tractor, which will be used to expand the canal. Of course, when Quicksong creator Michael de Cervantes wrote, When life itself seems lunatic, who knows where madness lies? Perhaps to be too practical may be madness. To surrender dreams, this may be madness. Madness of all is to see life as it is and not as it should be. And he wasn't referring to Buya. He just as, but he just as well might have been. Lovely. We've got one saved up just before the end of our show. I hope that you guys liked that one. That was a great couple of stories, if you ask me. A lot of interesting names, too, which I had a little bit of trouble reading, but I got through them. Well, I hope all of you listening now and in the future are doing well. I hope that you're either sleeping like a baby or or you enjoyed them. Like, I'm glad to hear that playful. Or that you're uh, feeling a little more relaxed, you know, a little bit better off. Sometimes we have really hard weeks. Sometimes we want to let our hair down and just lay in bed or lay on the couch for a little while. I'm that way sometimes as well. Just know though, there's always a place in cast talks for a bit of lounging, a bit of relaxation, and a little bit of taking things easy. If you like us, if you like this show, come on back next week too. We'll be here at the same time, same place, same Twitch channel. Though I do have to get my upload sorted. I haven't been uploading as much as I should be, mostly just to keep my hands from getting too tired. <sighs> but I do get uh, a little pulled away from it sometimes. Uh. 
I may actually be too tired for that uh, for that bath now that I'm thinking about it. But you know what? I find myself always looking forward to Saturday nights. I'm always looking forward to the next cast talks and getting people in here, getting people enjoying themselves, getting people to take it easy with me, to join us in our humble quest to relax a little bit. And I do thank all of you who are already here with me because you guys make this possible for me. I don't know what I'd be doing without Playful and Jenny and Ally and Galaxy and let's see a few other people who their names escape me this moment but they are still special to me without those people I would not nearly be as interested in doing this though I still would I do I still would much more of a chore without them. Alright, let's move on to another cat video. Well, I've got a few more left. Oh my gosh. Seeing those cats jump is awesome. use a back scratch. I want somebody to rub my back someday. That's a goal of mine. Somebody to rub my back and lay on top of me. Those are two things I want out of life. I think we have all got stuff like that though that we're looking for. Certainly mine are pretty simple. Jumping cats. Sounds like a thing that Robin would say to Batman. Another video where the cats are confused. It's true, they do get confused quite often, don't they?
says, VIP stand for a very important person. That's what VIP stands for, right? <laughs> I don't know what VIP stands for. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm sure I'll figure it out. The cats are starting to get less confused, though. <laughs> Aw, I love all these cats with their cool names. Usually I die. Okay. And the last video for today, as we enter into the final quarter of Cast Talks here very soon. I still need to think of some good cat names. But I'm not very good at making up animal names. I always second guess myself. Just for one cat. <sighs> A feisty kitty, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Fetch with a kitty cat. <laughs> They're like, I don't know if I want to grab that though. <laughs> like, no, I'll just be fine over here. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh my gosh, look at that floor. Looks like it'd be lovely to step on that. Imagine getting a skull massage from one of those. Yeah, that would be really nice. I just like massages in general, though. Back rubs and back massages are what I care most about, though. Always jumping over him. Cat isn't gonna like that though, yeah? You might be right.
You know, one of these days, I'm going to make a, a jazz loop in the background for this show. That's what I'm going to do. I'll play the tenor saxophone and I'll make a background, a, a background track for it. That'll be great. That's my goal one day. Oh well, we might as well put this one on in the background. Yeah, they get so confused sometimes, but confusing could be cute. Confusion can be really cute sometimes. I definitely think though that someday I'd like to make enough from Patreon and Twitch and stuff like that that I can have a small little place of my own where I can go to a gym nearby where I can set up a studio someplace near a massage parlor would be nice too maybe an acupuncture place That'd be nice too. I know, they're cute. They're real cute. But Cream Heroes is also really good at making stuff too. Oh. Such big eyes. I really do adore big eyes. You know, I definitely find myself interested in a lot of a uh, small, sometimes, uh, you know, not very important details. And details that I find very, very important are the way that you, you know, look at an animal and give them a little wave and a nod when they're walking by you. I find that oftentimes they don't seem to understand what I'm doing, but I like to make sure they know that I'm on their side. And cats, you know, I'm always giving them little little thumbs up and nods and waves and stuff. But I generally want to create a good impression that on every being that I run into, not counting spiders or cockroaches, mind you. Those are not things I wish to be on good terms with. That's okay though. Can't be friends with, friends with everybody.
No, folks. I'm actually getting pretty tired, so I may end up going out here in a few minutes. But as always, I wanted to thank you guys for coming on to the to the show and <laughs> Oh, you know, I, I guess it's a little bit it's been a long week. I guess you're right, it has been a long week. But more than anything else, I wanna make sure you know I appreciate you folks. I'm always glad to have your activity in my chat and I'm always glad to have you hanging out with me. While I, while I just sit here and talk to you for a little bit. It makes me feel a lot less alone, and this show in general is really good for me. So, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for... <laughs> it was fun to sing the stream again, I'm glad. Thank you for taking some time out of your life to come and visit old Cass and to take it easy with me. Good night, and make sure that you take it easy and stay safe. And even more than that, take care. See you next time, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye.